and uh, welcome to the, 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 the Woody Show. Right, Mickey, have you got a crib list? No, I don't do them. Okay, so you, you just wing it, do you? Yeah, I'll just uh, follow you guys, you know. I'm, I'm only here for the comedic value. <laughs> this is a comedy show. Well, I'd think so. Why do I have to keep reloading freaking player on bloody Twitch? I don't know, but one of you's got a browser open I with... Think it's Mickey. He's echoing. Mickey, can you kill... Can you kill you, you, your echoing? So that means you've got to, you've got a browser open. Oh, got you, Andrew. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it's done that to 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 um, delete spam. Right. Um, well, I've only got Skype open and this open. That's oh, it. That's you, whatever you've done, it's stopped. I'll turn the echo down on me mic. <laughs> oh right, okay. Do it. Walworths are nicking the sweeties off the front. <laughs> that was so good. Yeah, yeah. they still. They still exist in Australia, you know. I as know. A, as a bricks and mortar shop, and I, I think, if I remember correctly, they've also got a website that you can buy from. But uh, I miss the old Woolies. I do. I bought some loads of crap out of there. I mean, every, let's face it, everything was crap. It was, it was like Poundland on steroids, really, wasn't it? Oh, it's so good though, because they when they changed the season, the seasonal stuff and that, and I've still got cups mugs you know drinking mugs from uh from when from when it was open obviously then this would be from before i worked this and when i was when i had when the kids were young so i'm talking early 90s i still got mugs um i don't have any plates anymore but i had plates for i've got um like a trifle dish and little trifle bowls um and uh, what they i remember one of the last things that i bought from there was a little sort of rectangular wicker basket um, for the bathroom, and I've still got that. It's still in like really good condition. So I loved Woolworths. It was so nice, so good. Uh, did you know anyone who worked in Woolworths? Because I seem to um, know loads of people who used to work in Woolworths even before I was I there. Don't, I, don't, I, I don't, to be honest. I don't know anybody who actually worked there. Uh, I've, I've been chased by a few of them that worked there. <laughs> I've been on the old Nick, the old pick and mix, but. <laughs> it's just confusing me why they ever left it at the doorway. You know, yeah. and then all the doors are open. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think probably it was a psychology thing. Maybe it was just it was one of the cheaper things, you know, to lose. But yeah. also you could go in there and it, as you walked in there, because it would be like an impulse purchase. You'd be walking in there thinking, right, I need a plate. I need a plate. Oh, oh, I'll get a bag of pick and mix and pick and mix because of the weights of them are so, were so expensive, are still so expensive. You think you're getting a small handful of things and it costs you a fiver because they all weigh like heavy. So yeah, Bovine Spongy Form on Twitter said that I liked Woolworth, shame it's gone. So yeah, it's, um, it is missed. It is missed, but one of those things. I used to work on the record, they called it the record bar, which was basically the um, it used to be records, then obviously it was tapes, and then CDs and DVDs, and then computer games and things. So I used to, I used to work there, and it was such good fun. And had the pay been good, I would have stayed. But it was before minimum wage came in, and I think it was on something. I was on something like three pound eighty an hour. This was like late nineties. WHS still holding on. Yeah, it is. Um, in fact, this bond, uh, bovine bond for BSE. Traces of her up. But WH is, Smith is still holding. Yeah, it is. Uh, in fact, in our town, uh, it's also the post office now. Uh, I don't know if that's a lot of thing around the country or it's just here or what, but it's our, our main post office is now in uh, WH Smith's. I don't yeah. know how because. Well, I don't know how they're holding on, to be fair, but uh, they're still doing it. Uh, yeah, um, and I think it's. Um... I think it's sort of a shame for post offices that it has to go that way because a lot of the money for post offices come from the sales of the shop. Yeah. Um, so, and if you're an independent post office, which it, most of them are, um, then um, you're going to be losing out if you've got WH Smith, which is what WHS is, which um, for anybody who doesn't know, WH Smith is like a, a chain of stationery shops and bookshops. Yeah. Uh, they sell books, sell stationery. Um, and office supplies and things like that. So. Well, I do. I do this for 
things like plug tops, you know, three pin plug tops. Yeah. Things oh, like yeah. that. I, I miss it. I miss it because of that. That's what it is. Is that everything comes with a plug now, so we don't need a Woolworths because they did. That was their their line. They I they made sold. A, I made a mistake of buying some paint from Woolworths once. Instead oh yeah. Of painting it once, it cost. I had to paint it about four or five times. <laughs> I mean, it's that thin that it was opaque. It was supposed to be gloss. So I mean, yeah. Oh. The quality wasn't fantastic, but it was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell you the other thing that I used to buy from Woolworths, Mickey and Tracy, right? This may not mean anything to you, but when I was at senior school, um, <clears throat> uh, I, I was very interested in, in When I was at junior school, I was very interested in electrics and how electrical things work. And you used to be able to buy little light bulbs, light bulb holders, wires and batteries to make yes. your own electrical circuits. Yeah, Do you remember that, circuits. McGee? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, and as as as, uh, as bovine spongy form there says, it was the place to go for writing pads. Also, also, it was the place to go for record player needles. Oh, oh. yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I you all forgot that. about that, for didn't old, you? Yeah. For my old downset Viva that I used to have in them days. <laughs> what, last Bye. week? Yeah, last, well, I've still got it. <laughs> I used to go to, I don't know if it was a chain, I used to go to the one um, called Reddings for records. And I don't know if that was a chain, but there was one right local for me. And I used to buy my um, my styluses there and my sheet music. That's the things, you know, we had the specialist shops, even in the, uh, the 70s through to sort of like the 80s. And then you had a department store that you could go in and buy. It, it, you know, department store being lots of shops in one big shop sort of departments you know yeah, yeah. but then then supermarkets sort of took over with the you know you could you could go in and you could get it wasn't particularly specialist equipment but you could get a thing that was like what you were looking for and um a thing like what you was looking for yeah oh, what does that mean do you go into Ann summers and say that you know, have a thing <laughs> You know, them things that go buzz. Yeah. <laughs> I think like what I was looking for. I mean, how does that work? Do you actually say that to people? I'm looking for a thing like what I was looking for. <laughs> That's a technical term. <laughs> well, I know, you know, like, um, there used to be so many more butchers. So many more butchers. For what, example. in Woolworths? No, generally, like specialists. <laughs> Although, having said that, there probably was some, at one point, something like that in Woolworths. They, they had all... They used to have cafes um, in Woolworths and they used to have gardening departments and they used to have, they, there's all these departments that are there when people say to me, oh, do you remember this? And I'm like, no, that must have been before my time. But no, like there used to be loads of butchers, give as an example, and you used to be able to go there and go, can I have a nice piece of steak? And you would get a nice piece of steak. And then supermarkets started doing them and you don't get a nice piece of steak. You get a piece of steak that looks a bit like it's going to be a nice piece of steak, but it comes in a plastic tray and it's nothing like the piece of steak you would have got from the butchers. That's what I mean. The thing that is like the thing that you were looking for, <laughs> but cheaper. So you go to the local butchers then, support your local butcher. Yeah, but yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's, what, that's what a lot of people say. The supermarket is the death of the high street. No, it yeah. wasn't. It was people, people choosing to use the supermarket. Yes. It was the death of the high street. Yes. Yes, I agree. They, they did, to be fair, in, in, in our local supermarket, they did have a butchery department, which they've now closed down. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you say, everything now comes shrink-wrapped on a piece of cardboard, vacuum-packed. Yeah. On the vacuum packs, it says, it may be a funny colour, but if you leave it for 20 minutes, it should uh, revert to its normal colour. <laughs> you funny colour. I'm sorry, but if I go to butchers, it's already the colour that I want it to be. Yeah. That's exactly what I mean. That's you, you're, you're getting the thing that you want, but it's not quite the thing that you wanted. So you're getting a thing that's like the thing you wanted. <laughs> This is what I love about you, Tracy. You're so scientific and precise. <laughs> Succinct, I know. Huh. But um, well, the, the, what I tend to do, what I always do, whenever I, if I go away or if I go somewhere, then I do seek out the actual butchers. 
um, and the actual bakers. And if so, I need... so you can get the thing that you want to get. That <laughs> yeah, thing. The it looks like the thing, thing that you need. Thing. Yeah. yeah, not the thing like the thing, but 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 the thing. But the thing, right? Okay. okay. Yeah, and sometimes I get things that are better than I thought I wanted. You, you know, so like um, I went to. Bear no, Con no, I don't know. Do you know, Mickey? You'll know. No, you'll know. No you'll know. You'll know in a minute. Um, <laughs> this is how I'll... women shop, by the way, Mickey. This is how their minds work when they're in shops. All right. <laughs> That's no, why it takes no. so long. Now, because we had family down the weekend, I actually went and did. Asda's on my own on Monday, and I can tell you, I was in and out there with a full week shop within twenty minutes. Why does it take me and the wife an hour and a half? Ah, uh, because they were looking for the thing that looks like the thing that was better than the thing. <laughs> That's precisely. And they were trying to communicate that to you, Mickey. That's why it takes yeah. so long. Yeah. Are we back to things again, Tracy? Yeah, I'm a very things night tonight. I don't know whether I, I don't think when I woke up this morning that I loaded my vocabulary. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of things tonight. <laughs> you were bloody late, late up this morning. I mean, yeah, I, I'd already been having earache off Steve for an hour and a half. By That's the right. Time a terrible insomnia last night. Any of you out there have insomnia, suffer with insomnia? Because I suffer terribly with it and. Um, I went to bed last night and I fell asleep about nine. Lovely. But I woke up at half past nine and my brain was just, da, 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 let's have a dance. And I was awake till three o'clock in the morning. But I was too tired to get up and do anything useful. I was just too tired so, and my eyes were really sore. So and, this phrase, since you've been up, what have you done that's useful? Yeah. I've done some things. I'm oh, she does some things, right. I completely know where she is then, Mickey. She does some things. <laughs> <laughs> Not the things she was going to do, but the things like the things she was going to do. Except these things are better. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. Things can always get better. Yeah. Um, I, um, I, I was uh, trying to write the content list for one of the streams. Um, at the same time, it's trying to get work out how to use Instagram. It just won't take anything that I try to upload to um, it. And um, I tried it on my phone, and that still wasn't working. So that was lovely. And then um, also, what was I doing? Reading Steve's messages that kept coming through. <laughs> I managed to upload something to TikTok, and I managed to upload something to um, Twitter. So okay, there we go. Um, I sat, I, having lunch with, I sat having lunch with my grandson. He said, Dad, he said, Granddad, he said, your phone keep pinging. I said, oh, don't worry about it. It's two old duffers keep trying to contact me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just impressed with you, Tracy. You've now gone from thing to something. Yeah. Well. It's, it's expanding. Yeah, it's expanding. I'll be up to yeah. Califragilistic Dosius by the end of the night. Yep. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Like I said, the what, the the insomnia, and then I woke up, and the first, literally, the first thing I saw was Steve this morning. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, that actually. Hang on, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 no, 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 that's not true. Your husband's watching, right? That is not true. I was not the first thing you saw when you woke up this morning. Um. Yeah, you were. <laughs> you were. I woke up. I didn't open my eyes. I've got I to tell you, Andrew, right? Andrew, there's nothing between us, not even a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up this morning, and there's my phone on the side, and I was like that, and I pressed the button, and I went like that. Oh, no, I I was, did that. So it, I saw Messenger first, then I saw the group chat, and then I saw Steve. And then I had to look for my glasses because it's like, oh my god, there's about a hundred messages here. <laughs> Tracy, I'll put it in language you understand. He did the thingy to the thingy, the thing which was better than the thingy thing. that he hoped the thingy was, but, was but he now something? doesn't do the thingy. But it's something. The thing. <laughs> the thing. Something that popped up on our little page earlier on. Mm -hmm. How old must you be to get barred from a pub because of your age? <laughs> I don't know if you actually read the article. I did. Huh? I did. Um, for people who don't know, it's a, it's a guy of 76, I believe he was, 
walked up to enter a pub and the bouncer on the tour on the door barred him because he was too old. Now surely that must be ageism. And then um, I saw that the the pub, like in a statement the next day or whatever, said uh, it was a miscommunication. Yes, and apparently the person doesn't work for them anymore. How convenient is that? Yeah, extremely. You know, uh, it just um, it boggles me. I mean, I'm surely my my pound for a pint is as good as is it a pound a pint still? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Not even in Wellspoon. Is as good as the next man. <laughs> Steve will oh. tell you he's up the pub all the bloody time. It, well, he, he, no, not not since COVID. Not gone recently, up. no, no, no. Nostalgia again. I used to be able to go to a like proper <coughs> pub, not a Wetherspoons, a proper one, um, with a fiver, and I used to be able to buy a packet of cigarettes and six halves of cider, and still come home with change. Yes, but it's not the 1970s now, Tracy. <laughs> uh, Mickey just said that's because you're female. No, at the time I was with a very, um, I was going to say tight ass, but he would have liked to have said, thought it as being women should pay for themselves because it's equality, but no, tight ass. Uh, Saturday night, um, we were out and uh, me, at my age, I was in a wine bar come nightclub. We didn't have any hassle about how old I was. All they wanted was my money out of my pocket. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. That's it. It makes you wonder, obviously, you know, where, where else is that? Uh, uh, what else is happening there? Well, it's either the bouncer it has said, no, you're too old. You know, like as in filtering out the beautiful young people. Or... or there's more to he, the story that we haven't been told. Exactly. He could have been shit-faced. He could yeah. have been quite drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then again, you know, who knows? Because what might have happened is, is that he might have been really quite drunk, rolled on up there, gave him a bit of lip, let me in, I'll, I'll drink here all the time, whatever accent he had. Um, and the bouncer sort of playing, you know, like, no, you can't come in. No, you're drunk. Come on. You're too old for all this. Go home. Go home, granddad. Um, and... Um, yeah, so we're not going to know the full story. Well, I have to have a. It's, made, it's intrigued me. I'll have to have a, a, a look and see if I can find any more info after this stream. See if there's been an update. Or... It's, it's not just that incident, but I mean, in life in general, are people who are of our age and older uh, discriminated against? Or, or is it just a one off sort of thing, do you think? Well, I think. Go on, Steve. I'm good about to tell you what I'd like, right? What I'd like is I'd like to walk into my local corner supermarket. Right, we've got we've got two co-ops in my village, right? One at the bottom of the village and one at the top of the village. I know we're, we're lucky two co-ops. And I'd like to go in there and I'd actually like to go up to the counter with alcohol and I'd like the girl behind the counter to ask me if I'm over twenty five. That would be so nice. Yeah. 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 Do you agree? Yeah, that would be, yeah. yeah. Tracy, well, you have I, no idea what we're talking about because they're always no, asking I, I, I did. I'm sorry. My what, my youngest grandson had all his injections today, so my daughter's a bit nervous. So I was just saying to her, go away, I'm on the street. No, I wasn't. Um, I was just uh, sending love. Um, well, his no, baby I, injections, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad um, to hear that she's having them because a lot of people these days don't. Yeah, well, there's, I've, you know, I've got a subject for later. Okay. Um, but... Um, <coughs> Uh, no, I, now I have forgotten because I was talking about that. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, being ID'd for age. I was being ID'd for age until until just before the pandemic. About, okay. about 2019, 2018, 2019 was the last time I got ID'd. I think and the last time there. I got ID'd was the 18th century. <laughs> well, and it, it was my local Tesco and they know me in there. And then what happens is when you get like a new person and everything... Or, or a new security guard as, as well, because it's the security guard in the locals that tend to do the IDing and stuff. And and I'm there buying my two bottles of wine, and they're like, "Oh, um, have you got ID?" And I laughed in his face, <laughs> and and he's like, "No, seriously, have you got ID?" And I'm like, "No, no." He said, "Well, if you look under 25, you need to be carrying ID." Or 25, I think it was. 
He's um he said um yeah, I can't remember if it was twenty five or twenty eight. Anyway, if you look at if you look under twenty five, you need to show ID. And I laughed again and I said, Mate, I'm nearly fifty <laughs> And he was like, Really? No, no. Really I'm so I was like, Look, you've made my day, let me just buy my wine now <laughs> And he I think he was so flabbergasted that he let me off. <laughs> Do you think he was trying to get in your knickers? <laughs> singing from what knickers? Yeah, do you think he was trying to get into them? Oh, uh, yeah, probably. My um, my daughter was cycling to work one day. This is probably five, six, seven years ago. And she got stopped by the truant officers <laughs> and asked why she wasn't in school. <coughs> huh? She was 28 at the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm yeah, sure that was actually my, unbelievable. I'm sure my youngest daughter has had something similar happen to her. I'll have to ask her and then and then get back to you. But my youngest daughter, because it's when people say that I look young for my age and everything like this, and I say, you know, it's nothing that I do. I've, I've just been, you know, lucky with good genes. I don't dye my hair or anything like this. This is all natural. If you can see the silver ones that are coming through, then look, there's one. Um, and um, I take after my dad. My dad didn't look his age until the last sort of two or three years of his life. And even then, you wouldn't have said that he was in his late 70s. Um, both my daughters take after me, but my youngest daughter is even more so. Up, up until probably about two or three years ago, people thought she was about 15 and she's in her 30s. Um, and for years, people thought that she was like a 13 year old with two children. And she, she and still now she gets dirty looks on the bus because she's got a child who's taller than her. And, you know, like becoming a man because he's you know, a teenager and everything. And she's walking along like because she's little and, and, and slim. And she's got like sort of quite a, not a baby face, but young. Yeah. Um, but I brought her up because she was always little and she was the younger and her big sister was always the gobby, bo bossy one. I brought I brought the little one up to make sure that she had a mouth on her as well. So God, not not bad. I don't mean swearing and C's and F's or anything like this, but she can stand up for herself. So she's like a, she's like a little sort of um, what are they? The uh, the little dogs. <laughs> she's like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say, the, 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 I like being old because the older I get, the more misbehaving I can get away with. And they just look at you and say, well, he's old. I think, great, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, don't, they don't, don't, they look at you and say, well, he's I old. Think, I think the, the older you get also, the less you care about what people think of you, to be honest. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, mm. I really do. Or you couldn't care less what people are like. That's, that's the way I've got to now. Take me as you find me, you know. You, now you've mentioned that, can I just touch on a subject? I just touch on a subject. I'm going to take. I'm going to take about three minutes here to touch on a subject. Um, for those that don't know, um, and it's going out on the restream on the stream elements chat. I have cancer. I have an incurable cancer, um, and I've had it since 2012. Um, and I, I don't consider myself dying from an incurable cancer. I consider myself living with an incurable cancer. And it's my attitude. I think I think it's a mind thing. Some people, they get told they've got an incurable cancer and immediately they think, oh, oh, God, I'm dying from it. Well, the point I'm trying to make is that one thing that cancer does for you, when you get told you've got an incurable cancer, is you don't fear anything else. There is nothing I now fear. I've lost all of my fear, except moths. I still have a phobia about moths. Um, don't laugh. Um, it, it, it comes down to when I had a very traumatic childhood experience, and uh, I saw a moth when I was a young child in, in the uh, in the pushchair, and it, it freaked me out. And ever since then, every, every time a moth comes anywhere near me, I'm reduced to a to a gibbering wreck. And I'm not kidding; I really am. And everybody around me thinks it's hilarious, and I don't. Um, but the one thing about cancer is that it takes away your fear. I've got no fear of failure because what what else can happen to me um, that's as bad as that? There's nothing. When you rationalise it like that, it does take away all of your fears. I, I'm not frightened of anything. I got into an argument with a guy over a motoring incident a couple of months back, and he, he said to me, he said, if I've got to come out of my car, I'm going to hurt you. And I shouted back at him and said, I've got cancer. Do you honestly think you can give me pain? 
that's anywhere near close to the pain I already have. Mm. And he, he, he said, he said, he said, I'm going to kill you. And I said, no, you're not. But if I tell you I'm going to kill you, I've got nothing to lose. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. So it, it takes yeah. away all of that. I just thought I'd mention that. Um, while well, Mickey brought it up there, I just thought I'd mention that. The, the, it's not being old that makes you care less in my case. It's having cancer. Although saying that, being old does take away a lot of my inhibitions because, like I said, I can get away with it because people just look at me and say, oh, he's old. And the grandkids look at me oh, granddad's old. Um, and I get away with it. And my missus is constantly rolling her eyes at the things that I do. But the older I get, the more I get away with, and I love that. That's, that's one of the things about being an old person. I really, really enjoy being old, I must admit. Um, and somebody the other day said to me, you really need to act your age. And I just looked at it and said, well, I can't. And I said, why not? I said, because I've never been this age before, so I don't know how to act it. So, so Mickey, yeah. you're older than me. How do I act being 62? Same age you always have, mate, because I just act the same as I've always been. Mm-hmm. That again, though, that get, goes down to when you get to an age, certain age, you you become invisible, and it's oh, it's just the old person, you know. It's it's you become less relevant. You're not like at the front there going, yeah, look, look. Well, you're not, you know, but like doing stuff and people going, oh yeah, praise. It's oh yeah, granddad thing, right? Okay, um, what were we up to? And you you get ignored, and. Again, that's a, that's a society thing where it's it's um, older people aren't as worth anything as they used to be. Used to be that we were full of all the, you know the stories and the uh, wisdom and and everything like this. And now it's just like oh, oh yeah, just the, the, dad's playing up again. Ignore him. And I know I've been guilty of that. I used to do that about my own dad. <laughs> Don't care what people think about me now. I mean. But like Tracy's just said, you, you, you start to become invisible. I mean, you know, so, I mean, I don't care uh, what people think of me. They say, oh, look at him. Look, he's, look at that old T-shirt he's got, grumpy old veteran on it. You know, well, so what? Mm. I don't care. Now I've got a blank page. What the hell's happened to you? Everybody's disappeared. Oh, there we are. We're back. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, I, I just don't care anymore. And, uh, what people think. Just carry on, live your own life, mate. Uh, what everybody forgets is they'll be old one day. Yeah, I don't think people realise that they're actually going to get there. And it's it comes one quickly. Of those, yeah, it's one of those things that you just like, oh yeah, no, that's way off in the future, and it's not. But it feels like it at the time. And I, I remember, oh my God, the classic ones. You know, I mean, I had my, my girls when I was in my late teens. And so when I was in my sort of like early 20s, mid 20s, and obviously they were able to talk and things, I used to get from my daughter. Can you remember that far back? I can, yeah. Okay. Can you? <laughs> no. Oh, I can. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Uh, I, 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 remember, I remember clear things. And I remember my girls saying to me things at the time. They, they'd say, Mum, in the olden days, when you were a girl, and I'd be like, hey, God, excuse me, that was literally only about 15 years ago. No, but that's the olden days. And and also, Mum, do you remember the war? <laughs> and so, because it obviously feels like, you know, when we're younger, it feels like it's such a big, long stretch to get to that time. And then all of a sudden like that, you're there. And, and, and it's your time. And then your kids are having their kids saying to them, Mum, in the olden days, and it's just, oh, lovely. That makes me laugh <laughs> the olden days now. is like the 80s and the 90s, isn't it? Oh, I read somewhere, I read somewhere, we're now as far away from 1980 as 1980 is from the Second World War. Yeah, yeah. That's, Put that in yeah. the prospects. Yeah. I find it really strange. I didn't, when I, when I was little, and people talked about the war, and I knew my older relatives and that. It, I, it, obviously, I didn't think about it. But now, when I think, when I was born, Second World War had only finished 25 years before that, and I'm like, that's so weird. That's that's just really weird. It's it, 25 years is is not that long, no. and 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 I didn't realise that there were still signs of like war you know in london 
because of um, the old bomb sites and things, a lot of them still hadn't been built up yet or, or built on. And I didn't realise that these, these waste grounds were, were all where, where bombs had hit 25 years before. So. Do you want to hear a story about London bomb sites? Yeah, I'm going to go and get my wine. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. Carry on. Nikki, have you ever seen the film Full Metal Jacket? Yes. Uh, what do you think? Years, what do you uh, think of it? I enjoyed it. Good film, yeah. Really did, yeah. Yeah. Where was it filmed? No idea. London Docklands. Was it really? Yep. All the shots that were Seoul, uh, not Seoul, um, Phnom Penh, whatever the town was inside, where the sniper was, and everything else. All the yeah. building shots were done in Docklands. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. I thought that would be somewhere like I don't know. Um, West Berlin or East nope. Berlin or something nope. like that. All done in all done in Docklands. The whole movie was made in this country. Oh, right. Before they built up on Docklands, wasn't it? Before they built up on Docklands. Oh, yeah. Well, before I mean, the Shard and all. Well, that, well yeah. of, the Shard is not in Docklands. Shard's at London Bridge. Your I mean, your, your geography's no good, is it? Who do you think I am? Your geography's no good at all, is it? Well, it ain't yeah. if I don't come from London and I've got no intention oh. of visiting the place. Um, but yeah, Full Metal Jacket was filmed entirely in the United Kingdom and all of these scenes which are in the big town, when they enter the town and they come across the sniper and everything else, all filmed in London Stockings because at that time, and this is probably the early 1980s, I could IMDB it to find out when it was done, at that time, Docklands was still, as Tracy was saying, a big bomb site, wasn't it, Tracy? Um, it was. There was some... Um... And lots of old warehouses that are from um, the importing of different goods from over the years, and they were laying waste. And I just, uh, 87, it came out. 87, yeah, I just yeah, IMDb'd it, 87. Yeah, um, yeah, so there was, there was uh, lot, all the old bomb sites, but then also, like I was saying, all the old warehouses that were, were like, standing empty and useless um and um you know the the shipping industry to the docklands had just gone down and it was becoming more obviously there was uh, canary wharf and that that was becoming more of a banking type area and offices and things so sort of going up in the world and you probably got w wouldn't recognize docklands now um because it's all sort of luxury apartments and and stuff like that and it's a shame because i didn't think about it at the time i sh i wish it was like now because then i could go and look at these atmospheric old warehouses which are now long gone can I, can I just read you guys something you'll like this right kubrick stanley kubrick filmed full metal jacket in england in 1985 and 1986 scenes were filmed in cambridgeshire the norfolk broads in easter london at the Me millennium mills and the becton gasworks in newham and the isle of dogs Bassington Barracks, a former Air Force station, and then British Army Base that he used as the Paris Island uh, boot camp where Private Pyle shot himself. Very powerful scene, that, wouldn't it, Mickey? Yeah. yeah. Um, and a British Army rifle range near Barton in Cambridgeshire. The whole thing was completely done in England. Um, and you wouldn't know. And, yeah, the, the disused Becton Gasworks um, was used to de depict Huey, the village, after the attacks. And Kubrick actually blew up some of the buildings there with permission they actually blew up the buildings that were going to be demolished so it was uh it was it was it was it was it was, it was a film and it was many years before i realized it was actually filmed in 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 the uk and that that that's always surprised me if you go back um 300 years to 300 years um it was the men who wore the makeup and the women didn't they used to paint their faces white with dust didn't they yeah, um, that Mer mercury or lead—I can't remember which one it was now. Lead. Yeah, it wasn't very good for your skin, really. No, but we, we, but but there was this phase where women didn't particularly wear makeup, but the men were were the ones wearing yeah. the massive wigs and the make, and they'd be painting on like beauty moles and and stuff like that. Maybe maybe we're entering an era where the men are going to be more dressed up and made well, they up. They say things go in cycles, don't they? Yeah. Um, right. Anyway, look. But this I'm going to go. You. I'm going to so, go and get uh, my beer. I'll leave you to it. I'll be back in thirty or so minutes. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs>
Longest 30 minutes ever, eh, Mickey? There he's gone. <coughs> I, I hope you got your, I hope you got your list. I have my list, and um, hello, welcome to the Tracy and Mickey show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, Liz Truss is on. Re Liz Truss is for those who don't know. Oh my God. Yeah, she's 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 one of the candidates who, uh, cause, because we've got Boris Johnson, who's the prime minister, and he's resigned. So we've now got two candidates who are in the running to become the next prime minister. And Liz Truss is one of them. And she's now on record in the last sort of 24 hours or so of saying that how um, the best, something like the best way to solve energy crisis is to stop people cluttering fields up with solar panels. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but she's basically saying that the fields need to be for agriculture and, you know, no, none of these solar panels. And and I'm like, yeah, I, I can understand the sentiment, but that's not really going to solve the energy crisis. <laughs> no, no. You know, not unless you can bottle the um, bovine... Um, um, excrement. Yeah. <laughs> Which people have the tried. Meat, even a cow's <laughs> out, apparently is one of the greatest earth wars. Now, if we could bottle that, surely we could uh, solve the energy crisis. Exactly. That's we we could do that. Uh, well, we're not right in one way, but she's a nutcase in another way. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think she was thinking of sort of grains and stuff like this. But I don't see how it would solve the energy crisis. No. Because that means that we would be cutting down on the solar panels. And she hasn't put anything else in place for it. This is the thing. It's not like she said, right, we don't want the fields being cluttered up with it. So really what we need to do is subsidise people who want to put them on their houses, on their roofs and stuff like this, um, or in their back gardens or, you know, however else, um, and renewable energy sources and things. She's just, so oh, it's going to, you know, be farm. It's going to be farming. Right, that's good. So, but what about the energy? What about this? fact that we've got yeah. to be paying like four or five thousand pounds a year they've, oh. tried, been, they've, they've been trying for years here just down the road for us we've got sizewell power station which oh, is yeah. nuclear yeah we've been trying for years to uh, build a third one there which mm. has been put up inquiry after inquiry after inquiry uh, this year they've been permission to build it mm. my question is i mean you look at France and other countries, a lot of theirs come from nuclear. Now, we've got to forget, nuclear now is a very clean fuel. We're not talking about the old thing, you know, 20, mm. 30 years ago. Nuclear now is a very clean fuel. Um, so I, I believe that we should build more of them. Mm. Then we won't have to rely on gas for our gas powered uh, stations. We can stop using coal if that's what they wish. Mm. Uh, because you've got clean energy. Then you might say, well, what do you do with the end of life uranium or whatever? Um, but at the moment, it's been buried deep in the earth, as you probably know, up north somewhere. I forget <laughs> where it is. But, uh, but yeah, it's. Um, I think, well, I mean, it's too late for this crisis, but um, nuclear probably is, is the way to go, along with, I mm. think, wind, solar. Even waves, they can hold oh, up some yeah. waves. They, you know, have so, you seen uh, some of the technology of the wave power where they where yeah. they put like um, you know they've done these experiments of like a mile long or whatever it is, like of, booms. Um, yeah, you know, and it's the the waves moving that actually produce the electricity. Which, yeah, but I mean, so there there are waves. But the thing is, again, this country, we're well behind the. Uh, Behind the curve with, uh, with yeah. the, very short sighted in this country, always. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, most of our power now is owned by foreign countries. Mm. French, yeah. German. It is most of our most of our power now is owned by, uh, which yeah. I mean, it's terrifying me that I mean, is it October that they go up, the prices go up, and then again yeah. in January. Yeah. Uh, and we, I mean, Martin Lewis is is saying that we'll we'll end up. The average bill will be four and a half thousand pounds a year yeah. for, for nice. fuel. Yeah. It's insane. It's absolutely absolute insane. madness. And it's all because why we rely on a very unstable state that has been unstable since the Second World War. Mm. 
to pump us gas. Yeah, well, I mean, we produce our own gas, but what do we do? We sell it to Europe or whoever, so they sell it back to us, and it's just... We've even been exporting it to the States, where Biden won't let the States drill their own oil, which they have a plethora of, and then he imports it from us. Uh, Gas goes over on, on ships, believe it or not. Gas goes over on ships to the States. Um, they're importing a... oil from the Middle East when they've got a plethora of it at home. Yeah, yeah. So not only are they um, adding to the pollution by shipping it across the country, he yeah. said, I just can't understand that man. He's a nut job as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> he is. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm old, but he's bloody senile, that bloke. It's so frustrating when you see on the internet people's brilliant, you know, inventors, brilliant ideas for things. Yeah. And nobody picks up on it. Not quite the energy crisis, but pollution, plastic pollution. Um, somebody had um, has, has invented, and there are there are some places that. They they have they have tried this and using it and everything, but it's not enough. It needs money, and it's basically like this huge kind of plug hole. That's all I can um, describe it as. And what happens is is that it's it all the plastic like like down a plug hole goes down that, and then what happens is all the water comes out, leaving all the plastic in these like huge container type things. Um, and then obviously that gets lifted out of the sea, and it's marine friendly because it's not it's not dredging the sea, it's not it's not fishing the sea, it's not pulling through the sea. It's like I said, a, a giant plug hole. Now fish generally do not lay on the top of the sea no. <laughs> unless they're dead, and so they're not. Oh, it could be sunbathing trace. <laughs> um, but so they're not going to be little, you know. exactly just. Uh, <laughs> bit of sun lotion um but they so they're not going to be sucked into this little this sort of massive plug hole and and the plug hole isn't isn't sucking it's the like i said it's the same uh concept as a plug hole yeah and so it, it goes in and then all the pollution can be lifted out and now this needs to be done on a massive scale so somebody has invented this and it's brilliant but money's not being put into it and I've seen a similar type of technology being used um, on some local rivers. I can't remember where, but again, um, and it sort of basically filters the plastic out, but leaves the, it's not marine wildlife, is it, in, um, in rivers, but you get my jet drift. Yeah. It leaves the wildlife behind. And all that happens is, is that you just have to change the filter and take the, well, bag or whatever it is away. Now, obviously, that's not going to stop plastic pollution, but it will pick up on what plastic pollution is already out there mm. to get all the microplastics out of the sea um, and the waterways. So and There is also there's a company that turns plastic into tarmac and they use it for tarmac in the roads. That's and apparently it's more durable than your, than your normal tarmac. That's fantastic. So you can drag it out the sea, turn it into tarmac and fill all the potholes in Britain. Although Fantastic. I don't know if there's enough plastic in the sea to <laughs> fill all the potholes in Britain. <laughs> but what the hell is that? What the heck was that? And look, Steve must have was come in the door Steve or something. Was that off on his motorbike? <laughs> he's, he's just past wind as he's come in the door <laughs> or something. <laughs> it, it sounded like at first oh, that dear. someone was blowing their nose, but then it went off. So it was like. <laughs> Could have been him and Sean going off for a romantic, <laughs> romantic meal while we, while we chat away. Unfortunately, Mickey, if you want to disappear, I can't switch you off. So <laughs> I won't turn myself off, but you'll just get a big blue S on the. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, that's true. Um, I just, just, just uh, wait suddenly, till Steve comes back. Yeah, uh, I just suddenly thought that then that, that might be uh, I, a thing. But I don't, but want, to leave, I I don't think... want to leave you on your own. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! I'm trying to sit here chatting away by myself, listening for Steve to return on his motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> well, there he goes. He's on his way back now. <laughs> that was well done, wasn't it? 
Jasper Carrot <laughs> on his funky moped. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Do you know I think what? He must have left the window open or something. Yeah, well, I was going to say perhaps he set up some kind of special effects CD yeah. going on so that every now and then it makes a weird noise for us to react to. Like, are we still awake? <laughs> Yeah, are, we still are, the Twitch, are the Twitch viewers still awake? <laughs> oh dear! So, but is is this this big plastic island? Is it in the Indian Ocean, or was it in the Atlantic? I can't remember. But there's a massive one, isn't there? Massive yes. plastic island. I know where you but mean, but I can't think. Can't they use like the old trawl nets we used to use and and gather it up that way? I think, um, although that one might, thought, might, you might actually pull in some of the fish yes, as well. See that that's I thought that, but then again, uh, yeah, I had exactly the same thought that if you do that, you risk it's not just fish, but you know, dolphins, mammals, yeah, marine life, yeah, marine life, and things like that, and also it could damage seabeds and things. So, oh, it's it's a it's a double whammy problem yeah. in the sense that the plastic's already there. And so we need to do something about the plastic pollution. But at the same time, we need to come up with solutions where we're not using plastics. And I know that I am a big user of plastic. I, I drink bottled water. Um, and I, you know, when you buy things from the supermarket, like we were talking earlier, they come in plastic trays. They don't come in wrapped in a nice bit of greaseproof paper anymore it's plastic trays and plastic rip open things and it comes in a plastic bag as well and exactly and then um on top of that you've got unscrupulous companies who you pay to have the plastic taken away who they then pay peanuts to another country to dump it cheaply and they're literally not processing it they just dump it which is yeah. why we've got islands and mountains of plastic i've seen the, the uh, programs on tv hugh fernley whittingstall um you know he's gone over to a place in the far east or east east asia or whatever I, so i can't remember where it was and he's gone look this is our rubbish and there's like supermarket logos on the bags and he's going this was you know um like a, like a packaging from from a piece of fish or something and it's here now he's that is so weird can you hear that as well yeah yeah hello steve <laughs> um he's coughing well in the background there <laughs> i know what he's done he's gone off to get his beer and sean sneaked all in he's probably from... done you know he's probably just turned his camera off and he sat there listening and sniggling yeah. in the background I was going to say, or oh, Sean's net nipped in to try and find the off button, like like to <laughs> try to unscrew everything. Like I'll give him monetization. <laughs> oh, ah. oh, oh! There you go. There you go. He's back. Okay. Sounds like he's got Chris as well. Um. Yes. So. Um, um pollution plastic pollution energy crisis but i mean they go on about recycling trays years yeah. ago we used to have milk in glass bottles yep that you sent back and they were yep. sterilized and filled or up. you took them back to the shop or you, uh, you got your 2p or penny or whatever yeah same with your pop bottles i don't know if you call it pop but we call it pop yeah, no, I saw. I've got, I've got northern. I'm half northern. All oh, right, your, your pop <laughs> bottles. You used to take them back and get threepence or whatever. Uh, yeah, we, exactly. People say, see, people say to us, "You old who's never recycled." Yes, we did. Yeah, recycled and worked. Damn, well, you don't see a mountain of bloody milk bottles in the middle of the ocean, but you got a mountain of plastic bottles stuck out there. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. It weren't just that. Like I say, I was in Asda's on Monday. I bought some bananas. Now they got their own wrapper on, but they're still in a plastic bag. Yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah. And I, I, I understand the Apple argument. Apple shrink wrapped in a little bloody four pound. Now that, yeah, I understand Why? the, I understand the argument when it comes to things like cucumbers, because because the if if that is shrink wrapped, I mean, it, I know it comes in its own skin, but I know that that sh that shrink wrap because it does help to keep the water in because Fresh. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I understand that argument, but then also 
you could also um, try to find a way of, you know, it, it's educating people of food waste, you know, yeah. rather, than, rather than necessarily buying a massive cucumber, you can buy small baby cucumbers now. But we every, buy half. We buy half. They do half in house. Yeah, they, they half. do half, but that's in plastic again. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's all, it's all in plastic. Everything has to be so perfect. Well, you used to be able to go to the green grocer and say, may I have half a cucumber? Yep. And they yep. would cut one in half for you. Without all, all the plastic. Or pick your own side. Yeah. I'm echoing. No, no I'm not. you're not. It's him. Yeah. I thought it was me echoing. But you no. used to be able to... That's the thing. Everything has to be perfect size now. It's all got to be pretty much uniform size. He's back and he's stuffing his face. Here he is. Look, stuffing his face. No. It looks like a donut. Um, all pies. Oh. Hey. Milton Mowbray. Milton Mowbray. Eh? Um, Here you go. So, so everything, has to, everything has to be perfect sized or it, or it gets rejected. And that's the thing that, that really annoys me. Yeah. It's because not the right shape. I mean, it, it, it's still edible, and like you said, you used to be able to go to the greengrocers and get, you know, whatever. You used to be able to go to the greengrocers and say, I mean, I actually, I do have a greengrocers near me, and I do utilise him. And if I go along there and I say, oh, I just need a small onion, he'll give me a small onion. He yeah. won't give me a standard one or a big one. He'll give me a small onion. Or if I say, oh, I, I need a lot of onion, I'll have one of the big Spanish ones, he'll get me a big onion. So the same reasoning with cucumbers. If I want a cucumber, but I don't want to use too much, he'll either give me half a cucumber or a small cucumber. Are we talking about digging here? She's fixated on cucumbers at the moment, Steve. I don't know what the fixation is. I really oh, don't. Okay. Just checking. Uh, Carry just on. peeling the plastic back, apparently. No one. Rolling <laughs> the plastic back. Oh. Yeah, we, 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 we were talking over um, plastic pollution, the energy crisis it led on from. Um, and um, the, the fact that it's got to be a two-pronged approach, as in, um, um, there, obviously, there's lots of plastic out there that's already polluting, so that needs to be cleaned up and found something found to do about that, like recycle that into something useful, clean it all up and everything. And then, but at the other end of the scale, we need to stop using so much plastic. So it has to be, you know, I know they're coming up with ingenious ways of, and things of um, not using plastic cutlery. There's bamboo cutlery and there's also um, cups, plastic cups, used to be plastic cups, but now they're made from plant fibres and things. So they're biodegradable and things like this. The, the problem that I have, though, with bamboo cutlery is even the words that saying it sends my teeth on edge because it's, it's like wood. It's, it's making my teeth cringe. <laughs> Oh, well, wine spongy form said we need more wax type paper and cardboard to, yeah. to replace plastic. Like we used to have. Although, I mean, to be fair, I was in the recycling industry for quite some time and cardboard isn't that easy to recycle. It can mm. be done, but it's not as easy as, as paper. But the thing is, is that if it ends up in the sea, cardboard, or in the ground, it degrades. Exactly. Whereas plastic will be around for another ten thousand years, or, or it slowly breaks down to microplastics that then goes into the food chain. Um, the polio vaccine is to going to be given to the kids aged one to nine. Um, I don't know if it's just in London uh, because they found the polio vi virus in sewage. Now they found that a few months ago, um, and I can't remember what they put that down to, but basically. At the time, they said, oh, you can't catch, it's not the live virus and you can't catch polio from sewage. But now they've decided that you can, that there is a risk. And so um, kids one to nine are going to be offered a booster or might in some cases be their first immunisation. Um, so the polio vaccine usually in Britain comes on a spoon or... Um, well, it used to be a sugar cube, but I don't think they give sugar cube, cubes now, but it's usually like drops or something in the mouth, not usually an injection. Um, and I've seen that some of the internet have gone a bit mad about this, as in, oh, when will the vaccine stop? It's just a government conspiracy to control us. I mean, it's a bloody polio vaccine. This is going to be from people for, who, for some reason or another, haven't managed to 
give their children the vaccine or for some reason they haven't been vaccine, vaccinated against poli polio themselves. So, so the polio vaccine is going to be either a booster or the first one for the kids one to nine because obviously they think, um, the health authorities think that it's enough of a risk, enough of a problem um, that uh, kids have to be boosted or, you know, covered again, you know, cause like I said, some, some won't have had it for some reason. Um, and um, polio was eradicated many decades, many uh, in Britain, I think, many decades ago. 1960s, I believe. Yeah. And that was because of vaccinations. Um, and um, now with the with this problem, it's just going to be offered again. So that goes back to what Mickey was saying earlier about uh, my baby grandson being vaccinated today. He had his first vaccinations because he's two months old, so he ha he would have had the works. He'd have had the injections and things, plus uh, polio, so against diphtheria, mump, no, not mumps, uh, rubella. I can't remember what they are. Tetanus. MMR, measles, mumps, rubella. Me uh, do they do MMR at two months now? I believe so, yeah. Okay, because when, when my two were young, it was at about a year old, but it may well be that they did do it all in one. And it used to be that you that they had an injection every month for the first three months. And um, so, yeah, so he had all of those today. Um, and obviously throughout his childhood, he'll be having boosters to make sure they're still working. And then, you know, so Mickey said earlier, you know, well done, you know, not an anti-vaxxer and that. No, no, I'm not. But there will be some people, a lot of people out there saying, why should I subject my child to another vaccination? And well, because we eradicated polio. And, um, you know, we've got monkeypox on the rise in, in Britain, which acts like smallpox, which was another one that got eradicated. I think um, 1970 was the last case or something. I can't remember. Something like that, yeah. So some, it might, that might have been when smallpox stopped being vaccinated against, but um, because because it was a success. But now we've got monkeypox. So anyway, your thoughts, Mickey? I think people who don't get their children vaccinated are being foolish. Um, that's all I've got to say on it, really. But you know, um, it's not only for their own health, but it's the health of the population as well as a whole. I believe, you know, so. Yeah, exactly that. What about um, what about the people that say, oh, but it causes autism? I don't think, has that been scientifically proven to cause it has. autism? I mean, it has, but the mothers do the research and apparently... Well, well, there you go. Google is my friend again. Um, is, this, but, is this Facebook research? It probably. Um, oh. but what we, what, what you got to remember, I mean... Like you say, let's go back to the 60s. And how long has been autism been a thing? Because it is now a thing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, so perhaps it was about when we were younger. Perhaps I'm being a bit disingenuous. But we were just called naughty naughty children in those yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, no, I, mean, right. I don't know. I, I think, you know, that get your kids vaccinated. Um if people if they have got autism, there is getting more and more help. Admittedly, we're probably not there yet, and there probably needs to be more. But um, there is help out there, and it is um, getting better. Yeah. I've uh... Steve, your thoughts on vaccinating kids? Well, and... I've had I've had all my vaccinations. Um, completely yeah. polio, BCG, measles, mumps, rubella. Everything, including, I've had five COVID vaccinations now, three, um, three primary, and two boosters. Oh, so Steve, that means you're you're literally streaming from the five G in your head. What? You're streaming using the five G in your head that all the COVID vaccines have given you. No, I know what you said. I meant what? Yeah, yeah I, I've heard those. I, I've heard those. Uh, I've heard those. It, Conspiracy theories. Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry. Carry on. Yeah. No. No. They don't. They don't. I'm due for another. I get another vaccination in the autumn, so I'll be six times vaccinated against COVID. Um, <coughs> I've also had. Um, 
Uh, what did I have last year? I had... Um... Oh, God, what was my lung condition? Got pneumonia. Did you have your pneumonia one, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah the bacterial yeah. pneumonia. Yeah, I've, I've had, had that and I've had a bone this year. And I've had all my flu jabs. And to be honest, it hasn't done anything to me that, that, that's terrible. All right, I may look a bit older than my 17 years, but apart from that, it's done It's done nothing to me. Um, I've been quite tough. Uh, no, I'm quite happy. Sad to say, I had an antibody test for COVID a couple of weeks back, and with even the five jabs that I've had, I don't have any immunity. On top of that, right, on top of that, I've got to jab myself every single day. I don't know if you know that, but I actually have to jab myself every single day in my belly, which is not a very nice experience. So I've got I'm on I'm on something called Clexane, which is a blood thinner. Um, oh. And I have to inject myself every single day. Um, are they like the? I mean, you don't have to tell me. Are they like the pen injections you get for no. diabetes, where you just click the end? No, no, no. no not these are the pro a proper, yeah, proper syringe jobby. No. Oh, no, I was just curious. I didn't. Uh, what else is doing? Friend of mine, um, friend, of, he's got diabetes, and he has to use the old. Um, but you, uh, it's like a little clicky pen thing that he. Yeah, Epi into his stomach. Yeah, Epi, but that's that's the word I was looking for. But he actually showed me and my wife how to do it in case we're out together, and he has an episode that we know how to do it, which I thought was quite uh, quite interesting. Mm. Yeah, but these are probably the ones you have are a proper syringe thingy, mm. jobby. Yeah, I ha I I had my first flu jab <laughs> ever. Um, I had I had my three COVID jabs and I had my first flu jab ever last um, November, and I had no um, side effects from that. But I did it. I got it simply because I was concerned that if I did catch COVID and I caught flu at the same time, because I've had flu probably four or five times before and it's not funny. Uh, and when people say, "Oh, oh I've got flu," uh -huh, uh -huh. It's not flu. Flu absolutely knocks you out. Oh, yeah, I've had it, but I can't get out of bed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, as man flu, that is. <laughs> oh, that, that is called hangover. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I just thought, uh, no, I, I really don't want to risk getting flu and COVID at the same time. So I took the decision to have the flu jab that they've been offering me for the last 10 years. And so I took it, and I had no side effects from it, and compared to the COVID uh, jab, which left me feeling a bit rough for the first, you know, the 12 hours. Um, but I'm glad I did. I'm glad I had it. And are you saying, Steve, that you had the antibody test for COVID? I did an antibody test um, probably about 18 months or something ago, and I was really looking forward to it. And I'm, oh, no, no, it might not have been that long ago. But, but yeah, it must have been about a year ago, because I'd had two injections. I'd had two jabs by then, and they said, would you like to do an antibody test? And I thought, oh, great, this is going to tell me what, if I've come into contact with it or whatever, and what my level of antibodies are. I thought, it's going to tell me lots. No, all it's, all, when it came back, it said, the test showed positive that you have either been infested, infected with COVID or had a COVID vaccination in the last three months or something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, well, I could have told you that. <laughs> I wanted to know what my level of antibodies was. Am I, you know, or in, in comparison to the rest of the country, am I 80% protected? Am I 20% protected? Have I got none at all or loads? Ridiculous. But you've got none, No, Steve. none at all. Absolutely none at all. Well, as you know, I had three. I've had three COVID injections. And as you know, recently I still caught COVID. So, uh, but you weren't hospitalised. and I wasn't hospitalised, so it must have helped in that doc that that respect, I suppose. But because uh, that's the uh, thing, it doesn't actually. But it was like a heavy flu. Yeah. It was like a heavy flu. That's all. The, the, My wife, the she caught it as well, but she had yeah. no symptoms at all. No. Oh, Sean Bean. His name. Yes. Sean Bean should either be Seen Bean or Sean Bourne. No, Sean Bean. No, look at how it's spelled. I have seen it, how it's spelled. Yeah, it always, it's one of those things that every time I see it, I have to call him Sean Bourne. He was, he was in the papers for day. That's what uh, made me think, yeah, but I can't some, remember. For what. some reason, I can't remember what it was. Oh, it's something about um, 
having coaches when you're doing love scenes in in the movie. Oh. Um, yeah, you know, some, something to do with um, they have sex coaches or or telling them where to put their hands and this that. Eh? It's when they're probably doing sex to do with, in the movie. It's probably direction so that because yeah. what you know what 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 the camera sees is not the most comfortable as to what you would think. Yeah. You know, if you just got on with it, the camera wouldn't see bloody anything. But no. That was, that was my comment I wanted to make about Sean Bean because every time I see it, I either want to say Seen Bean or Sean Bourne. And obviously, whether that's, I can't remember if that's his real name or whether he has adopted that, but it looks great written down. It's it's the same words, but with two different letters at the beginning. But um, I well, I just, a lot about the English language, a lot of words like that, isn't there? Yeah. That's, that's what I mean. Well, Sean, would that be the Irish way of spelling it? S E A N? No, I think they've got an S H, haven't they? Ah. S H A. Can I just, uh, can I just, can I just, can I just, just totally drive us off track for a minute? Yes. And do this. Look. Yeah, you've got a beard. As yeah, I went out, didn't I? I went out. Look, beard is your. Today's beer of the day. Um, I quickly went around the co op. Now, they've got some beers, but. I saw a beer there that I, I tend to dismiss as uh, one of the one of the rubbish beers that I don't really drink that often. I thought I'd give it a try because I haven't had it for ages. Good old Heineken, remember Heineken? Oh my god! Yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah, not yeah. one. It's not one that I drink that often. Um, I can't remember the last time I drank it, but if I had a special offer on two of these for four pounds, I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. So today's beer is here is Heineken. Now Heineken is a beer that doesn't pretend to be anything else other than it doesn't pretend to be although Heineken is a Dutch company, it doesn't pretend to come from Holland. It uh, it's brewed in uh, it's brewed in uh, in Britain by a Dutch company, but it doesn't pretend to be Dutch. It makes no claims like other beers which pretend to be uh, to pretend to be anything else. Um and I'm lying. I'm lying actually. This has been brewed in Holland. This is this has actually been brewed in uh, in Amsterdam, Holland, and imported by Heineken UK. So it's a, oh. so it's actually a Dutch Heineken. So which is which is a surprising result because the Dutch Heineken is much better than the British Heineken, and that is mm. down to the water. Uh, here we go. Mm. 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 <laughs> That's nice and crisp. That's actually very nice. I forgot how nice Heineken was. Cool. That used to be that used to be the drink you took to parties, didn't it, Mickey? Oh, that, Heineken, yeah. That yeah. and Party you Seven. The old Party Seven. They just don't say Party Seven, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or Double Diamond. Sick, take a poor one. Double Diamond. And, yeah. and what and you couldn't find a you couldn't find a can opener, so you'd be stabbing it with a bloody <laughs> with a screwdriver in the kitchen, <laughs> and most of it ended up on the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that well. From my youth, yeah, and my youth as well. In yeah. fact, this you probably won't remember this, Tracy, but when Coke and Pepsi, or not so much Coke because Coke's been in this country a long time, but Pepsi only really landed on the shores here in the late 1960s. Well, when Pepsi arrived here, it wasn't rental. The cans actually had two little black marks on the top, and you actually yeah. physically had to use. The old can opener, the Pearson. Do you remember that, Mickey? Oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Oh. Yeah. Because oh, it wouldn't come out of the can if you only did the one side. You needed to equalise the pressure by popping the other side yep. as well. Oh no, I didn't know that. I know, I know that, and I still do this. Evaporated milk, you have to pierce both sides, yep. otherwise yeah. you can't get any out. Exactly the same. Yeah. Oh my god. Exactly the same. With that, uh, with Pepsi. I can't remember doing it with Coke, but I do remember doing it with Pepsi. And also some beers as well, which brings you back. Double Diamond was one, wasn't yeah. it, Mickey? Yeah, Double Diamond, yeah. <laughs> my, my, my daughter went into the Chinese food shop. My daughter went into the Chinese food shop and she asked for Kung Fu chicken. What she actually wanted was Hong Kong chicken. <laughs> okay. And me and her sister were, were going... What, what what did you actually want? She said, "Well, you know those like chicken in, in batter and sweets out. No, that's Hong Kong chicken. Oh, so what's kung fu chicken? <laughs> Racist." <laughs> 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 
Tracy, do you drive? I don't, and I never have. I'm, I'm, I'm a good passenger. I'm a good navigator, but I've got a terrible <laughs> sense of spatial awareness. Okay, Mickey, manual automatic. Um, for the American, stick, stick shift or automatic. Well, up until the past few years, I've always had manual, but I must admit now I've got an auto and I love it because I'm lazy. It's a lazy man's car. Yeah, I've it's got, got seven I've got speed auto. automatic. I love it. Yeah. Uh, even, even now, Steve, some of the new lorries or a lot of the new lorries are now automatic. Well, when I was driving 7.5 tonners in the uh, – in the late 1980s, they were automatic then. So, and I know, yeah. I know a lot of the my sons just got his HGV, and they're yeah. all uh, they're all uh, they're all, uh, they're all automatic. So I just wondered, Mickey, because I've got my hybrid, all hybrids are automatic, but I've oh, got right. an automatic now, and I won't be going. Uh, I won't be going it? back to uh, manual. Southern Asia, um, Southern Asia. I mean, that could be that could be Turkey, um. <laughs> Or or my or my or my four out. I mean, miles away. Um, no, no. Like... Part, part of Turkey, part of, half of Turkey is in Asia, Mickey. Mickey. Anything yeah, below the Bosphorus, anything below the Bosphorus is in uh, is in, is in Asia. Southern. Everything above the Bosphorus is in Europe. Um, in India, though. Yeah, I know. No, you were saying India. Turkey's nowhere near Asia. I'm trying to tell you that the Bosphorus River, which goes through the uh, which goes through the capital of Turkey. Um, it's the it's the division between the continent of Europe and the continent East of Asia. West, yeah. So India, where about, I've never been to India. Whereabouts in uh, in India, Erebus? Um, whereabouts? Um, my my father went to India twice, and the second time he went, he went with my sister, who it was her first time. And so this uh, this is going back nearly thirty years. Um, and my dad spent the whole time just basically blagging it and boasting to everybody they, that they met. Oh, when I, when I try to get over to India as often as I can. And whenever I get to India, I like to do blah, blah, because he'd been there once before. The capital, <laughs> the capital, that's now called Mumbai, isn't it? It wasn't yeah. called Mumbai. Mumbai yeah. it, was, it was, it was, I Bombay. forget. Bombay. It used to be called Bombay, and now it's called Mumbai, isn't it? Cal no, isn't it called Calcutta now? No, no I think it's called. Cutter, no. No, I think Calcutta's good. Calcutta's now called Coal Cutter. Delhi. Okay, Delhi. Delhi. Oh, okay. Okay. No, all right, I'll get confused because there's Delhi and there's New Delhi. Um, Delhi Belly. Yeah, so Delhi. Okay. And that used to be Bombay, didn't it, um, Erebus? It used to be called Bombay. Delhi is the state and it has uh, it has two parts. Um, New Delhi and uh, Old Delhi. Okay, that's that's something I didn't know. Did you know that, Tracy? No. I have no idea. No, it's uh, it's it's. Uh, I had a friend come round the other day, right? I, my mate comes round on Tuesday, and last Tuesday, when the temperature here was thirty-five, he said to me, he said to me, he said, he said, what are we going to get as a takeaway? And I said, do you fancy a curry? And he looked at me and he said, it's thirty-five degrees, it's too hot for a curry. And I just looked at him and I amazed him and said, well, how does that work in India? Because like in India, it's. Uh, I think the average temperature out there at the moment is in the low 40s. It's about 41, oh. 42 in, uh, in Delhi, isn't it? Uh, isn't it, Erebus? 41, 42 degrees at the moment out there? Because I think you're about, no, you're you're ahead of us. Um, so it's probably, it's probably 2 o'clock in the morning now, isn't it? Uh, as, as Bungie Spot, as, as... Bungie! Bungie! Yeah. As SpongeBob says, right? <laughs> Hang on, let me just check. Bob Square pads. Yeah, let's just check. What, 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 I can't work out what the ABV of this is. Hang on. <laughs> Bloody hell. I can't see the ABV on this, but it's obviously working. <laughs> As a bovine spongy form says, Germany will probably be your best bet. Um, yeah. if, you're, if you're in designing and you're used to using software like CAD CAM, Germany yeah. is very much... Uh, is very much the technology technological advanced country. Five percent ABV, so it's not that it's not that strong. I must be, I must be a lightweight. No, it, you're just getting high off of all the pastry stuff that you had, that you had a minute ago or earlier. Yeah, and I agree with you, spongy form. Changing ain't the but SpongeBob SquarePants is so much easier. <laughs> I saw um, I saw uh, something on Facebook earlier. Uh, that the Japanese bus drivers are on strike. 
but they're actually Refusing, going around yeah. picking, picking yeah. up passengers and not charging them so that the companies are actually paying for fuel and losing <laughs> out on the... Now, see, that's, that's, that's a strike. That's, that's a, a strike. It wouldn't work in London because it's totally, totally cashless on the buses. It wouldn't yeah. work in London, but... Uh, but, yeah, I've not been to Japan. I've been to Korea, so I can advise you on Korea, but I've not been to Japan. Um, no, Steve, why do you... you were saying... So, sorry, Steve, you said that it wouldn't work in London because everything's cashless, but if we weren't touching in, it's still t taking cash... And it still mounts up. So if they weren't taking the touch-ins, then they're but, still driving. But, but if you've got an Oyster card, they've got their money already. Erebus says he's still got to stay six years in India. Can you tell me why you have to stay six years in India? I was going to ask that, Mickey. Oh, that you have to stay six years in India? Sorry? Sorry, Steve? I was going to ask that, you bastard. Sorry? <laughs> Old services, okay. He's doing his job, Steve. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Getting out of his tree, that's right, shit. I buy beer and he gets out of his tree. <laughs> well, his wife's gone to bed. He's been. He's now been putting um, little nips in his his oh. tea and ah, right. Four smoking years the funny university stuff. University and two years in the job. Oh, I understand. Yeah. So you got to get your qualifications and then uh, oh. do two years working in India before you can go. Yeah. I remember that's university. Cool. I learned to have sex and smoke joints. I never went to university. Oh, I did. I, fact, learned, I learned to have sex. In fact, when I took my points. options to sixth form, they said, why, do you, why on earth do you think we want to keep you in this school? <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, why on earth? But there you go. There oh, you go. I hated school. I couldn't wait to leave secondary school. Uh, I studied wait. modern history, right? I've got a degree that is absolutely useless for any sort of employment. Right. It's, uh, oh, sorry. In fact, Rishi Sunak said that if he becomes Prime Minister, he's going to get rid of unemployable degrees. Well, I've got a degree sorry, which makes what? me... What did you do? Was it modern politics? Modern political history from 1800 yeah. to 2000. Nobody's interested in that. It's, it's, it's a degree that's absolutely useless. I only took it because it interested me. Don't worry, Andrew. Weatherspoons, din dins tomorrow. Yeah, Jackson Pollock. I told you what happened to my weather spoons, and you're still going there. Yeah, <laughs> I want to check see the what... bottom to make sure. I, no, I want it. to see. I want to see what mine's called. <laughs> what, what label it's got on it? <laughs> oh God, Erebus says uh, since 2020, the only thing I'm good at is sitting in the same place for over 20 hours. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm the same really when excellent. I get constipation. Oh no, but I'm excellent at that. I I'm, am. I'm basically... I've made a life out of sitting on my fat ass. Yeah. <laughs> I am when I get constipation. Yeah. I can sit in do, one place for hours. you get constipation these days, though? I do. <laughs> I do. Oh. Mm. We've heard a lot about the... Um, oh, we're talking shit again, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they just I'm changed. Fine. There was a new start about like that. Um, the start date of the World Cup has been changed today. To what? brought forward. To what? Uh, carry on talking and I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. FIFA is due, if FIFA ratifies it, it's going to start one day earlier. Oh, whoa. Yeah, I know. I thought yeah. it was going to be like a month earlier or something. And yeah. I think time-wise, because of the time difference plus the heat and everything, it's going to be late evening for us. Am I going mad there? Or is it going to be early morning? I can't remember. I can't remember what they said. Oh, America is a very weird country. I've been to America loads of times. It's, their obsession with cheese is, is, is I don't know. The Americans are absolutely oh, hello, obsessed Dad, with cheese. Hey, but welcome back. Hello there. We we did nothing but we missed you. So we we didn't talk about anything while you were gone. By the way, yes, we did. <laughs> We talked, talked about, about Mick's dick. We talked oh, about we Mickey did. getting dicky. Yeah. Mickey's dicky. Yeah. Cool. Oh, he's, he's removing the furniture now. No, my chair is stuck to my back. Now, that's why I have a towel on mine, you see, and everybody took the piss out of me the other week, like, why have you got a towel on? You got yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, this is why I'm naked from the waist downwards. Oh, do you know what? That would be even worse, because... 
can you imagine sticking your ass to any kind of like leather or plastic leather chair like it like that <laughs> just say dulux next time no it was a durex ad that came up so i think it was um uh hello there had um caps lock on which may well be why because uh the system won't like shouting Oh. oh my god, I'm the only one here who hasn't yawned yet, so... No, I've got to explain, right? Well, yeah, but you got up about four hours after we did. In this country, uh, right, in my experience, there's three kinds of reactions to alcohol. Yeah. There's, you have a drink and you want to fight the world. You have a drink and you think you're the world's funniest person because you tell the same joke over and over again, but then you laugh at it each time like you've never heard it before. And more importantly, you start singing. But you sing every single song you know with one note. And it's the same one note. And then there's the third reaction to alcohol, and that it just wants to go to sleep. Guess which I am? The third one. The That's third fine. one. So, I'm, across, I'm across between um oh, oh hang on but you missed out the, the other one that where you have a drink and you just cry where women, women tend to get that a lot what? maybe that's you want to cry we, i think women get the crying bit a lot but maybe that's women's version of getting aggressive because men I would, I would know about being a woman because because it was a long time ago since the sex change no, 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 no. I would, I would know about being a woman because because you're not a woman. Correct. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> but he is an old tart. Thank you, Mickey. That's quite well. You're quite welcome. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, um, so I'm, I'm a cross between the um, being funny and being sleepy, and sometimes it, also it depends on other factors. Sometimes I'll have a drink and it will just make me want to go to sleep. But then other times it it actually livens me. So I think it just all depends on external factors and things. Actually, you're not, you're not wrong. I remember my first wife. Whenever she got drunk, she'd cry and want her mother. Cry and want another what? And want her mother. Oh! Mom, and yeah, Mom. I think I go through three stages. First, I want to fight the world, world, and then I sing, and then I'm tired. Oh, so you're all three? Yeah. Mm. Not, not so much fight the world anymore. No. Just like I said earlier, I don't give a rat's ass anymore. Are your legs going to sleep, Steve? Or what? Oh, is it no, fan I've up? got, I've got. I've got this at my feet. Got his fan blowing up his bloody shorts. I was going to say he's got a fan up his dress again. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he should do. Look, he moans about getting hot nuts, right? Just <sighs> borrow one of Sean, uh, Sean's long skirts and sit there with a the bloody fan up underneath, underneath that. You'll be all right. <laughs> It'll be like a bell tent, won't it? I'm naked from the waist down, Mickey. Yeah, but I mean, that must be all the wind is blowing past you. If you've got that little long skirt on there, look at that, hold the wind in. All yeah, ranges. exactly. Eh? Exactly. You can do a Marilyn Monroe for us. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely bow to your obvious experience in wearing skirts, Mickey. Well, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, he's I, I was going to say I've got some Scottish in me, but that's, <laughs> that's probably the wrong thing to say, really. <laughs> the main thing. I think it's just a case of grinding. Yeah. Yeah, grinding. Not grinder, Mickey. Not grinder. Get that smile off your face. I was just <laughs> Googling that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> grinding or grinder? Grinder is a gay sex. Like grinder is a gay sex act. Don't you find it funny, Tracy, that he knows all these? I know, it's amazing. Huh? He's oh, been I mean, doing his research. We didn't bring it up. He bought it up, so obviously he's got some sort of thing going on over there. Or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, That's got... where he went speeding off on his bike earlier. <laughs> I've, I've, got, I've got lots of gay sex going on. He swiped right. Uh, <laughs> I've, oh, I've, yeah, I, uh, 
I learned a long time ago, right, that when somebody's taking a mickey out of you, the best thing you can do is agree with them because it completely <laughs> takes the sting out of it. I noticed Mickey yes. does that with me. Yes. I completely agree with him. So, yeah. Yeah, I've got lots of gay sex going on on Grinder. Come and find me on Grinder. Huh. <sighs> I'm in my den, which is, which is the damn. It's, it's basically it's a box room. It's about the same size as a box bedroom. And I'm downstairs, right next to the front room. Sean's gone upstairs into the main bedroom. So when she shuts the door, she's a whole floor above me. And uh, on the other side of the house from me, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in my den, um, which is uh, which originally was our fourth bedroom, but as it's only me and Sean here now, I've turned it into my uh, my den. Um, I've got my computers in there. I've also got over there in the corner, you can't see it, I've got a single bed, because some nights I can't even manage to get to bed. So uh, I, I sleep in the bed down here sometimes, um, to say, because if I know Sean's got a bed and I don't want to disturb her, um, mm. I sleep in a single bed down there, so... Oh, God, separate sleeping is amazing. Oh. What? You actually sorry, get sorry? Good night's sleep. Separate sleeping is amazing. You actually get a good night's sleep. Nobody wakes you up. Nobody steals the, the pillows or the covers. Nobody snores. <sighs> yeah, Nobody but I, I, like, I like rolling over, putting my ass up against her back and farting. Oh, lovely. Well, you understand that, don't you, Mickey? Oh, yes. Yeah. Or when you've got a mosquito or, or, or a nasty, biting creature in there, just uncovering her side of the bed. Oh, no. While she's asleep, you know, just uncover the side of the bed. Well, then it bites her and not me. Well, when I go to bed tonight, I'm going to have to shove her over her side so I don't have to get a bit of room to get in. So she's enjoying having the the big bed to herself she's while like you're like a free. starfish every, every night. I, I've, I've got to tell you, <laughs> I've got to tell you a true story right about me and Sean. In our bed, I've got an electric blanket, but I've got a dual controlled electric blanket, so I can have just my side of the blanket on, or both sides. Well, Sean can't stand electric blankets, so I only put, on a timer, I put my side of the blanket on, so that when I go to bed, my side of the bed is lovely and warm, because Sean can't stand electric blankets, she won't have anything to do with it, she likes a cold bed. The only problem with that is, every time I go upstairs to bed, Guess who's on my side of the bed, all snuggled up <laughs> on the blanket? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I point this out to her, and she says, well, I don't know, I was asleep. And I think, like hell you were. That's hilarious. I can't stand a cold bed. 